But there is one person that's not here today. We're in Chicago. I said, where is he? I want to talk to him. In fact, more than anyone else, this person should be here because maybe he could learn something. And that's the superintendent of Chicago Police, Eddie Johnson. A few days ago, Johnson said, quote, the values of the people of Chicago are more important than anything President Trump would have to say. I don't think so, because that's a very insulting statement after all I've done for the police. And I've done more than any other president's ever done for the police. Over a hundred years, we can prove it, but probably from the beginning. And here's a man that could not bother to show up for a meeting of police chiefs, most respected people in the country, in his hometown, and with the President of the United States. And you know why? It's because he's not doing his job. Last year, 565 people were murdered in Chicago. Since Eddie Johnson has been police chief, more than 1,500 people have been murdered in Chicago, and 13,067 people have been shot. During the first weekend of August 2019, seven people were murdered, and 52 were wounded in 32 shootings in Chicago. And recently, they had 78 shootings over a weekend spree, and three people killed. And Chicago has the toughest gun laws in the United States. That doesn't seem to be working too well, does it? And a lot of you people know exactly what I mean. But under Johnson's leadership, they certainly don't protect people. Then you have the case of this wise guy, Jesse Smollett, who beat up himself. <laughs> and he said, MAGA country did it, MAGA country. Okay, he said, MAGA, that's a hate crime. That's a hate crime. And it's a scam. It's a real big scam, just like the impeachment of your president is a scam. And then you look what's going on. Smollett is still trying to get away with it. He would have been better off if he paid his $100,000 bill. Chicago is, unfortunately, the worst sanctuary city in America. Chicago protects criminals at a level few could even imagine. Last year, in Cook County alone, ICE asked local law enforcement people to please, pretty please, we beg you, we'll do anything necessary to stop crime. We want to stop crime. Please detain 1,162 people, please. But in each case, the detainer was denied. And Eddie Johnson wants to talk about values. No. People like Johnson put criminals and illegal aliens before the citizens of Chicago. And those are his values. And frankly, those values to me are a disgrace. I will never put the needs of illegal criminals before I put the needs of law-abiding citizens. It's very simple to me. So when Eddie Johnson and many other people from lots of other regions and areas support sanctuary cities, it's really, in my opinion, a betrayal of their oath to the shield and a violation of his duty to serve and to protect. 
the courageous police officers of Chicago, and I know some of them, and they're the most incredible people. They could solve this problem quickly. It's embarrassing to us as a nation. All over the world, they're talking about Chicago. Afghanistan is a safe place by comparison. It's true. Police officers of Chicago are entitled to a police superintendent who has their backs and knows what he's doing. You're entitled to a police superintendent who sides with you, with the people of Chicago. The people want this. And with the families of Chicago, not the criminals and the gang members that are here illegally, and not the stupid politicians that have no idea what the hell they're doing. But I'm going to tell you a quick story, because it happened right here, and I was very impressed with a certain person, whoever that person may be. I'm sure that we could find him. But about three years ago, I was leaving Chicago, and I was accompanied by a massive motorcycle brigade of policemen. And to do that, they have to volunteer because I guess most places say you have to volunteer. Well, I had a lot of volunteers, I'll tell you, hundreds and hundreds of them. Other candidates have none. It's almost like a free poll. <laughs> I had hundreds of them. Chicago was in the news a lot, just like it is now, because of all of the killings going on and all of the shooting and all of the horrible things happening. When I arrived at the airplane, the police officers asked whether or not it would be possible to have some pictures. And before I won the election, I could do that. I would do that routinely. Now, I think Secret Service has a little bit of a problem. I, it was up to me. I'd do it. But it was just before. Might have even been president-elect. Wasn't long ago. The leader of the brigade was this really powerful, strong-looking guy. Big, booming voice. And he was definitely the boss. Do we know what that means? He was the boss. Put your cycles over here. Come on, let's go. He's going to take a picture. Come on, let's go. Hurry up. Come on. And yet they all loved him. They love Vince Lombardi. They love Belichick, right? They love Coach Belichick. They love certain people. It's called respect. But he was very respectfully shouting at his men and, come on, let's go. And they were doing exactly as he said. He was, he was the guy. Just as I'm boarding the plane, I asked this man. I had a lot of respect for him myself because I saw the way he was. He wasn't doing anything wrong. He was just the boss who was a respected person. I said, excuse me, come here. What the hell is happening in Chicago? He said, it's very sad, sir, very, very sad. I hate to see what's going on. I love this city so much. I hate it. I asked him, what do you think the problem is? And he said, there's no leadership from the mayor, and there's none at the top of the police department. They're afraid to do anything. He said, we have great police, sir, the best in the country. And you all feel that about your own police. But he said that. He said, but we don't have the leadership at the top. It's so sad. I said, you're a tough guy. How long do you think it would take you to fix this killing problem in Chicago? He looked at me and said, one day, sir, these cops are great. They know all the bad guys, sir. They know exactly what to do. We could straighten it out so quickly that your head would spin. I left very impressed, whether it was one day, one week, or one month. There was no doubt he could have done it. And I actually told the story numerous times, and I actually sent his name in to somebody involved with Chicago. And that's the last time I ever heard of that man. He's probably got a good job someplace outside of a police force. <laughs> I'm sorry to do that to you, but he's, he's happy. He's happy. <laughs> so he doesn't have to put up with the nonsense that you have to put up with. But I thought, there's a guy 
who could be your police superintendent and do a hell of a job. He'd straighten things out. So that was years ago, and I was just thinking about it. I just thought about it on the trip over. I said, you know, I'm going to Chicago, and I want to tell the story because it was, to me, a great story. Because you could fix this up so fast. Good leadership would be pretty easy to find. You have a lot of people right now in the department. You know, I love when they go to other parts of the country and hire people, and they don't know the name of the most basic street. They go all over the country. They hire somebody. Comes in, oh, good, where's our headquarters? What does that mean? Where is it located? You have incredible people in the police department, Chicago. I know some of them. I met some of them. But remember, 565 people were murdered last year. And it's a shame. And I want Eddie Johnson to change his values and change them fast.